I just don't think people realize that it can happen to them. I think that's the thing that gets missed. You know, it's easy to slip through the cracks, but once you've fallen through, I think people do not understand that it's nearly impossible to crawl back up through the cracks. It's easy to stay down there. We have a real problem with chronic homelessness in Chittenden County and Vermont. Every single night, Vermonters are sleeping in alleyways, in tent communities. This happens in the wintertime when it's 20 below zero. They're trying to manage every night having a warm place to stay. And when you're focusing on that, you really can't focus on anything else, including your health. If we don't meet their needs, I think we risk more harm being done to individuals and the community as a whole. So I think it's actually in our interest to try to address these needs in a constructive way. I was clean and sober for 24 years. I worked every day, you know, as a mechanic mostly, then the electronics, and then I learned about computers and networks, and that led me to a job in the security industry. People just have to look and, and see that, in fact, in their lives, those people are there. And understand that they didn't get there just because they made a bad choice, but usually for a wider range of reasons. And we just need to give them a hand to get out of that situation to being, uh, having a more positive life. Hi, my name is Kate Hansen, and I'm an outreach caseworker at Safe Harbor Health Center here in Burlington, Vermont. Uh, we're a homeless health care program and part of my job is coming out to campsites and reaching out to folks who might be in need of services. We're off of Pine Street in Burlington at an abandoned camp. I know that a lot of people down here had been clients of Safe Harbors, mostly individuals, adults with disabilities and uh, some of our most vulnerable community members. When you live outside, you know, well, where's the toilet? You know, you can't, you can't collect any clothing and store it. You can't collect food, store it, and cook it. In the emergency department, we see the full spectrum of illness for homeless population, everything from, and it's really cold outside, I don't have a warm place to stay, up through people with medical conditions such as diabetes who are in acute crisis because the place that they're staying, a tent, doesn't allow them to give themselves even simple care things that would prevent them from getting ill. Huge the expense of it. At any one time, we can have as many as 20 to 30 patients in the hospital who no longer need inpatient medical care, but there's no safe place to send them. Those folks are gonna show up with police. They're gonna show up in courts. They're gonna show up uh, at the hospital. And their cost is gonna be extraordinarily high. Life is, for a lot of the folks here at these sites, is surviving and just trying to get through to the next day. Housing is healthcare. If you don't have housing, you can't really work on any of the other things in your life. So integrating this housing piece into healthcare uh, and into all sorts of, just looking at the person as a whole person and serving the person as a whole person, housing has to be a part of that. Having a base of operation makes everything else possible. Thankfully, I now have a, a, you know, a place to live. You know, I can get a bicycle, I can store it there. You know, I already have an extra pair of shoes. Well, when I was camping, I didn't have any extra shoes. Where are you gonna keep them? But all of those little things can start to collect. Now I wanna stick with, with that plan because it just it seems a little overwhelming. I mean, with just the stamps? It makes it easy. For now, I'm just concentrating on making appointments with case managers, maintaining my appointments with my doctor, yeah, you doing good? Yeah. How you been? Not bad. How have you been? Uh, well, uh... If you can get them to a place where they get all that support and get it on a more regular basis, it's going to cost everyone a lot less. I take a couple of big deep breaths. It's like an ounce of prevention. Your lungs sounded pretty good, actually. It's really complex. 
And these kinds of projects really don't work if any one organization or any one sector tries to do it alone. And the beauty of this project was that the housing came with wraparound supports. And that's really where I think we're seeing the impact. Our work is not done. We will continue to need cross-sector collaboration and cross-sector investment so that we can achieve a goal of really having homelessness be very short, very temporary, and that people actually have safe, stable places to live in our community. More than anything else, it's kind of been a spiritual adventure. Most of the homeless people one way or another, are just trying to resolve the riddle of their life. Every day you wake up with nothing. That's not an easy thing for a person in those shoes to just do a 180 and pull himself up by his bootstraps. A lot of people had given up. We just stay out in the tents communities because they had tried in the past and not gotten any success. They know now there are opportunities for people to be housed. They've seen it. They've seen some of their friends get housing. We have seen remarkable success. And it's really a testament, I think, to the relationships and the trust and the collaboration uh, across all of the partners in this project that has really made it a success and really a joy to be part of. It's a game changer because, you know, having a place to live I'm starting to feel more secure that this is going to work out for me long term and I'll end up with some part-time work. There's a couple of things I'd like to do. There's a lot of options once I settle in and get used to taking care of myself in this way. Mm -hmm.